Welcome to Who is Barnum to You? I'm Will Saris, your host. The Barnum Museum recently hired a digital educator, and uh, rather than have me interview him to introduce who he is and, and what he does, we thought we'd bring in some kids, our Barnum buddies, and have them talk to him and ask him some questions about uh, who he is and, and what he does here at the Barnum Museum. So take it away, kids. Hi. Hi. I'm Peter. I am the new digital educator at the Barnum Museum in Bridgeport. Hi. Hi. Um, <laughs> we're here to ask you some questions. Awesome. Um, when and how did you get into the Barnum business? Ooh, that's a great question. So I got started at the Barnum Museum um, because I had gone back to school to learn how to do a different job. I used to work in filmmaking and film production, and then I decided that I wanted to work in history museums. So I went back to school here in Connecticut, read a lot of books about museums and educating kids and sharing history with people, and then once I finished my schooling, I got a job here at the Barnum Museum. Hmm, very um, interesting. So why did you choose to be to go to schools and teach kids about Barnum? That's a, Barnum. Yeah, I decided to do that because I think it's a lot of fun to work with kids and you guys are really good at learning new things. Once we grow up, we kind of think we know everything or at least a lot of adults like to act that way. Kids are a lot more excited about learning new things. You guys sponge up all sorts of exciting stuff. It can be in your science class, it can be in your history class, it can be books you read maybe, or shows or movies you watch. And that's why I like working with kids because you're looking at things with fresh eyes and you're willing to ask important questions about it. That's awesome. You guys are built to learn. So that's why I like teaching you. One thing I would like to know, yeah. what, now that you know these things, what is your favorite Barnum fact? Ooh, that's a great question. My favorite Barnum fact is tough to pick because there's a lot of facts that we have to learn about P.T. Barnum's life, about all the people that worked with him. But I think my favorite Barnum fact is probably the fact that he was someone who was willing to change his mind over time. So if he did something wrong earlier in his life, later in his life, he was willing to admit to other people that he'd done something wrong. That's something that not everyone is able to do. A lot of people are really sensitive about their mistakes or they don't want to change their mind. And he was someone who was willing to change his mind. It's one of the reasons he had such a huge impact in his time, because he was always on the cutting edge of innovation, because he was always willing to adapt to new things. So who is P.T. Barnum to you? Yeah. Oh, that's a great question. P.T. Barnum is a guy who did a little bit of everything. And that's really helpful for me as an educator because his whole life spans this really interesting time where a ton of things were changing, the world was changing, the country was changing, Bridgeport was changing, and he was involved in all of it. He's involved in showbiz, he's involved in politics, he's involved in businesses, and he's a huge celebrity. So that means I can use P.T. Barnum in a classroom to talk about all sorts of things. I've taught classes about whales and environmentalism. Uh, you can learn about things like fractions. You love fractions, right? Yep. And you can also learn about things like the American Museum, the circus. You can learn about clowns. You can learn about these important people that were part of P.T. Barnum's life. And that's because he did so much over such a long stretch of time that you can learn a million different histories just by learning about his life. You've answered who he was to you. Yeah. Um, and that was a great answer. What, what did your, why did you switch your career from filmmaking to history? Like, why did you yeah. decide to switch it? That's a good if question. You would, if you put your, life into the first one, why did you decide to switch yeah. to history? That's a great question. I, I, just, I switched because the first thing was I love reading history books. Do you guys like to read books? Yeah. Yes. yeah. Reading's awesome. Reading's the best way to find out about the world. So I was always doing that, even when I was doing this other job that I did beforehand. But something else that I thought was important was that I really didn't like the history classes I went to in school. I thought they were kind of boring thought they weren't very interesting, and I thought the stories they told weren't as fun as the books that I was reading when I went back home. So I thought that I might be able to find 
an opportunity to make history more interesting and more fun for kids so that you guys don't have these boring history classes that I had when I was a little kid and you're not falling asleep in the back. So that's why I like doing this job now is because it feels like I can make history more important to you guys at a time when history matters. It's really important that you know where we're coming from, what happened in the past, so that you can decide where you want to go, what kind of lives you want to lead, and what kind of communities you want to be a part of. So I have one other question. Um, what do you know about General Tom Thumb? Oh man, that's a great question. I know a lot about General Tom Thumb. So Charles Stratton is his actual birth name, but General Tom Thumb is his, what he's more famously known as because that was his stage name. Um, he's from Connecticut. He actually was in Bridgeport, and when he was just a little kid, he first got hired to work with P.T. Barnum. Um, he was a huge celebrity in his time. This was someone who met kings and queens. He met Queen Victoria in England. So he's being introduced to royalty. He's performing in front of massive crowds. Thousands of people are showing up to see him. And he's famous, of course, because he's a little person. He's very, very small. He's also a great entertainer. He's a comedian. He sings. He dances. He acts in plays. So people show up because they've heard he's the shortest person in the world, but they keep coming back to see him again and again because he's really funny and he's a really talented performer. That means he gets to spend his whole career touring not just in the US, not just in Europe, but really around the world. In the 1800s, he's going to places like India, he's going to places like Egypt, he's traveling around the world on these international tours because everyone wants to see this amazing performer do his show. What is now that you've started this career, what is your favorite artifact in the Barnum Museum, now that you've seen them? I think my favorite artifact in the Barnum Museum, and it's tough, because there's a lot of amazing artifacts, and I love talking to our curator about all the different stuff that we have on display and that we have in our collections, but the thing I find the most interesting is probably our centaur, which is not something that was ever in P.T. Barnum's museum, not actually a historic thing, but it's the perfect display to show what it was like to go to one of P.T. Barnum's shows at the American Museum or at the circus, where you get to see something you've never seen before, that you'll never see again anywhere else. That's why I like that artifact so much. If I wanted to learn more about Barnum and his circus, what, what, what should I do? That's a great question. So an important thing to remember is that history is always changing because people are always asking new questions. So the important thing to do is ask your question. Figure out what your question is, figure out what you're trying to find out, and then you can go to the Barnum website, the Barnum Museum website, you can go to your local library or your librarian, or you can ask your teacher or your parents if they wanna go help find books or reach out over the internet to an expert who can help you learn more about a subject. And you can always go on the Barnum Museum's YouTube page where there's tons and tons of videos about all sorts of different stories from P.T. Barnum's life and his times. Like this one. Like this video. Like the one we're watching right now. Whoa. <laughs> so if I wanted you to come to my school, what should I do? I would love to come to your school. All you need to do is ask your teacher or your principal or your parent to reach out to the Barnum Museum. So if they go onto our website, you'll find an email address. They can drop us a message. They can give us a call. And I will show up at that school to give you and everyone in your class more lessons about the life and times of P.T. Barnum. Thanks for asking all the awesome questions, guys. And thank you for answering them. Thanks, kids. That was great. If you guys want to learn more about the Barnum Museum, please go to the website barnum-museum.org. And you can always check out more videos here on YouTube. See you soon.